you ready for Time in the Word? Time in the Word. by Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, an on-fire Bible-centered teaching ministry based in Los Angeles, California, with outreach throughout the United States, stretching from coast to coast. Join us now as Pastor Chester C. Pippen Jr. brings us an exciting, anointed message. But you got to learn to trust God. Amen? Are you listening to me? Time is running out. we got to quit complaining, quit moaning and groaning, and get with it. Right? There's souls dying all around us, honey. And my passion is to win the lost. And I haven't really talked to you as much about, and oh, I can tell you so many more miracles God has done for me. I, there's just thousands of things he's done for me. Pastor, when I wrote the book on hell, I got mad at myself because they couldn't get it published. The printing company said they were going to England and they weren't doing my book because it wasn't the timing. And they brought my book back and it was in a box. And then I went to take it out. I said, I'm going to throw it in the Banana River. I'm going to go right now and throw this book in the Banana River and forget it. <laughs> you ever done that to God? Have you? You got to repent. Really repent. Sister, you know what he did to me? I went in the bedroom, and my husband was at work, and my kids were in school, and I laid on the bed and said, I'll have a pity party, and I'll cry a while. Pastor, I laid down on the bed, and all at once a hand smacked my foot, and the next thing, I thought my husband had come home picking at me, you know, and I, all at once I was out of my home in the galaxy, shot up like a rocket in my body, standing in the galaxy. Nowhere in, around me was anything but the universe. And on my left side, I felt heat, a lot of heat. And I was afraid to look. And I said, oh my God, what have I done? And I heard the voice of God say, who are you to be afraid of man? That are as grasshoppers in my sight. He said, I gave you that revelation and you'll not throw it in Banana River. He said, you will get that book published, and I'm going to put you back. And he said, but I'm going to tell you a few things. Almighty God. And he said, uh, behold on your left. But I couldn't look. It was, And I finally turned, and you know, David said he saw the jaw of God like iron. I saw it, Pastor Pippa. It was flaming fire, bigger than the earth, his head. Bigger than the galaxy. His flame shot out of his eyes. I thought, whoo, one look at him, it'll cremate you. I'm serious. This was God, almighty God. And he said, you're going to go back, and you're going you're gonna to get that book published. And he gave me some more instructions. And I surely repented. I was repentant, and, and I was so scared. And then I went back down into my home, and I, I truly repented. And God told me, he said, that's my work. The divine revelation of hell, I gave you the name. It's mine. It's nobody else's. And he said, when I do the movie, it's going to save millions from burning hell. From hell. So then he shut up things in my mind till later, after I wrote the one on hell. He had me write Satan's Deception. And I've been reading part of it because Dexter spoke to me and said, Mom, we need to encourage the church and tell them some of the tricks of the devil to stop you from praying, to stop you from coming to church and get you to gossip, be mean and hateful. You don't want to be mean and hateful. You can't live like that. You need each other. You've got to forgive everybody. What if you had a husband walked out on you and left you and your family? How would you feel? Would you get bitter and mad? Yeah, but you can't. You've got to forgive. 
Do you hear me? You got to forgive. In hell, there was a place for all of those that would not forgive those that hurt them. In hell, there was a place for gossipers, backbiters, manipulators. And if you go home and talk about the pastor and his wife, you talk about the people, his records, angels write records. You have to plead the blood of Jesus and repent and wash those things away. Because when Christ comes back, we got to be ready. We can't be down here, you know, in all this mess. God says, clean up our own heart. Clean up our own soul. And one thing I learned, Dexter, was walking in hell, how the devil seduces people to gossip, to lie, to cheat, to steal. In Galatians, all the works of your flesh is why people go to hell. Everybody in hell were there because of the works of their flesh that they never repented of. They never asked God to forgive them. They never asked God to help them. You see what I'm trying to tell you? And around their feet was written God's holy word. Everything that God wants to do with us, church, we must overcome. Amen? And what else can the devil get us? He, we, if you were a drug addict and you're clean, he, he, he's got to try another way. He's got to say, okay, look at Susie today. She got a funny hairdo, don't she? Or look at her shoes. She needs new shoes. Am I telling you the truth? Talk about it. It's true. Right, brother? He likes to pull us apart. You can be tall, skinny, short, whatever. Green hair, pink hair, yellow hair. Somebody's going to find a fault with you. You hear me? We ain't perfect, right? Who's perfect in here? <laughs> I'm sure not. Amen. But I want to explain something to you. God is faithful. He is so faithful when he calls you. Like Pastor Pipkin, he saw him and he said, hey, I want to make him a great leader with my children. And then his battles began. Right, Pastor? You probably lost a whole lot of money, too. And I did, too, in the beginning when I'd be dead, me, my books, people cheated me, took my copyright, all kind of stuff. But see, God's still faithful. You can't be bitter over that. You've got to trust Almighty God to straighten those things out. Right, guys? And, and you've got to understand, there's times when you need the, the uh, presence of God's angels to watch over you, presence of God's angels to protect you. Do you know you have, you have guardian angels? How many know that? How many know it? We have angels that save us from car wrecks, angels that go before us. Um, many times when we go traveling, I actually see the angels in front of the traffic straighten it out like part in the Red Sea, especially over here. You have so much traffic. It's a thousand wonders. Dexter's a race car driver. And if you get in the car with him, you better pray. Pray, pray, pray. <laughs> and hang on. <laughs> Well, Dexter, I know a lawyer that's worse than you, honey. This lawyer, a friend of mine, one time I was here preaching, and God moved in the service and gave his son, uh, filled his tooth. It was with silver because he'd had them fixed, and they bumped, and God fixed his son's teeth, fixed the silver. And so we were in his car. He said, come on, Mary, we're going to go over here, and I'm taking you to this church. There's a lawyer here in California. And what happened, he got on that little side dirt road there that's by the side you're not supposed to get on. He got on that and went everywhere. I said, oh, my God. I was hanging on for dear life. I said, he said, don't worry, Mary, I know the police. They said, it'll be all right. He said, I said, how many tickets you going to get? It was a mess, boy. And <laughs> did some of you guys do that? <laughs> look at them, look at them. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, it is his job here, isn't it? We need to be, have a helicopters, right? Take us to church. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is really a driving. You better get ready to go two hours, right? To go 20 miles, children. Yes, except with Dexter. <laughs> you think, now I'm going to give you some scriptures, okay? But I want to tell you something, too. These books I wrote, we have them available after service with credit card or cash. And in cards you can order online. And 
But this book here is about what angels do. I think it was like 11 years God showed me what angels do in services. Like say Pastor Pippigan is going to pray for somebody that has maybe uh, soreness, cancer or something. There'll be an angel come by him. And as he goes to pray for that person, the angel touches that person like he does. And the fire comes out of the angel's hand and burns up that disease. How many of you feel real hot when you get prayer? How many? How many? That's the healing power of God. And he showed me how when someone gets saved, born again, what happens. And it's, it's a long story, but it's in my book. On, I think the one George Bloomer and I wrote. We wrote this in, yeah, Divine Revelation of Deliverance. George Bloomer and I did that. And it talks about certain things that George saw. George Bloomer? Anybody know about George? No, he's a great man of God. And um, he actually saw how to pray for people with Alzheimer's. Yeah, it's in this book. He wrote about it. Yeah, how God took him in the heavens and showed him how to pray. Yeah, so different ways to pray. But there's something here I want to talk to you about real quick. Hallelujah, let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful service that you're going to bless the people. They're going to be, have their ears open, their eyes open to really enjoy the presence of the King. And I ask, Lord God, for the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name to come now and to flow about us and encourage our hearts, God, and that all these hard trials, God, become as nothing because you're greater than all these trials in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When, when you, um, also heaven, there's lots in there about heaven. But I want to tell you something in the deception book, because Dexter told me to tell you this. When Satan comes, say you're going really good, smooth, no problems, nothing's wrong, right? You're happy, right? And then you get a call from somebody in the church that's in this book here. It tells about how the devil deceives us, seduces us. And maybe you were delivered from being a gossiper. How many were delivered from being a gossiper? Amen. And a hypocrite. Who's hypocrites in here? <laughs> you got to listen to me. It happens. These are serious sins. Because if even me and Marcel, we'll be talking. I say, oh, Marcel, we got to pray for that person. We ain't going to be criticizing or a hypocrite or we'll get in trouble with God. And we fear God. We really fear him. Because when he puts his holiness within inside of us, he, it's like a treasure. Do you know that? How many know that? When God imparts to you his power of his Holy Spirit, it's like a treasure. And that blood, Marcel, bring me that communion cup. The blood that Christ shed for all of you and me, that our sins would be washed away by the blood of the Lamb. Hit it, thank you, honey. You see this communion cup? That means the world to me. I'm telling you, I had a vision when Christ was crucified. Every drop of blood that came to the ground, angels wept and picked up the blood. Every drop and took it to heaven on the mercy seat. 10,000 angels, sister, it took. This precious blood was shed that if we were a hypocrite, we could repent. If we were a gossip, or if we were trying to tear down the church, or our friends, or our family, the Holy Spirit would say, I shed my blood, Jesus shed his blood to wash away our sins. How many of you have been to the cross and repented of your sins? How many? Raise your hands. How many times have we been there and we go through the battles, right, brother? God has a way out for every one of us. You may have to go to that cross a hundred times a month. You may, right? To repent of how someone run you off the road. Do you ever say those bad words? And you thought they were buried, right? Right? We've all done it. But we got to repent. Quick as we do it, repent, children, okay? This is serious. This blood that Almighty Jesus shed has never lost his power. Never, never, never. Has the blood of the lamb lost his power? You can plead the blood of the lamb, pastor, in your church and around your home, and there's a red fiery wall comes up and around. Said, I will be in Isaiah. 
I will be a wall of fire round about you and the glory in the midst. And in all the glory, there will be a defense. Amen? I was in the hospital. I had years ago for something. And I looked up on the wall, and there was the red glory of God. And then I saw inside the red, there was a fence like a chicken wire. And I said, wow, Lord, that's funny. He said, in all the glory is the defense of the enemy. He cannot cross that fence. That's right. But you've got to fear God and love God and be humble and kind. Amen? Because children, if we don't start paying attention to really how we walk and how we talk with Almighty God, you, don't, you have no promise of tomorrow except his promises, his, his precious, uh, what would you call it, his precious word. The word of God will keep you when nothing else will. I want to read you a verse. Now the Lord is the spirit, and with the spirit of the Lord there's liberty. But we all, with unveiled faces, behold, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the image from glory to glory. Just by the Spirit of the Lord. That's what's going on with us. You are being transparent from glory to glory. Did you know that? Are you the same as you were a year ago? No? You want to go hiring God tonight? Well, we're going to have a cleanup crew here. We're going to clean up ourselves. How do you like that? <laughs> I, uh, I, don't want, I don't want one... One person I know to go to hell. Not one of you. You hear me? And you're not going to, long as I can help it. I want to put the fear of God in you. Oh, yes, God is good, and I feel it's Holy Spirit. When, when Christ, okay, I got it. God, what is it you want me to tell him? Yes, Lord, yes. He wants me to tell you something. And it's going to shock you, okay? And he told me this today in prayer and told me to read this. Now, how many years, Pastor, have you been in the ministry? How many? 45? 45 years serving God. He could probably write 50 books, right? What he's been, his wife, what they've been through. How many, right? How many more is in the ministry in here over 10 years? Raise your hand. Ministry. Well, you guys are together. You, brother. How, and how many battles have you had and won? How many, brother? A lot. How many of you? A lot. And we won, too. I hear the Holy Spirit. Let's bow our heads. I mean, he's saying something to me. He's saying, you've come to the time of how I suffered for you. I suffered on that cross for you as you go through these great trials. I suffered. I know what it is to feel the pain and the rejection and the weakness of mankind. But my Holy Spirit I gave to you as a gift from God to help you overcome these things. I want to elevate this church, saith God. But there's things that have weighed heavy, heavy upon the pastor. And there's things that he wants, the Lord wants to do with everyone in this church, wants to elevate us. But as we come up higher, we must let the past go. We must let the old things go, sweetheart. We must look to God for new things, new excitements. Wow. There's a season and a time in God's hand. And this is your season to come up higher. This is your season to elevate. And we're here tonight to encourage you. That as we all go through these battles, God surely is going to bring you through. God surely is not going to leave you in the desert. 
God surely is going to pick you up and say, come on, for the battle is the Lord's. And yes, we go through trials with our families, our loved ones. We're trials with death. We have things that hound, hurt us. And yet that almighty call of God and the chosen of God look to the Lord's face and they say, Lord Jesus, give me the strength to go on. Heal my body, Lord Jesus. For the spirit of the Lord is upon us, and the spirit of the Lord is within us, and the spirit of the Lord will rise up within you, and he will speak things that will, will shock you sometimes. And we are here tonight, together, together, that we can repent. If we're out there right now, repent of any sins that you've done, any gossiping you've done, any backbiting you've done. You need to repent tonight, my children. You need to lay it right now at the feet of Christ. He needs to take that burden. He needs to do it so you'll have your peace and joy again. Peace like a river, I hear God saying. Peace like a river I want to give you tonight. Peace, my children, like a river. Right there in your seats, begin to repent to me. Talk to me. For I'm right by your side. I am right by your side, saith the living God. And I'm inside of you. I, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I take authority over the devil tonight, Lord Jesus. I plead the blood of the lamb. I cover these precious people with the word of God in a covering. They're under a church covering, Lord God. Stop the attacks on this church. Stop, Lord, the, the fierce anger of the enemy that's come against them. And I bind that devil, Lord, with the blood of Jesus Christ. I rebuke the strong man, Lord, with the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord God, send your special warfare and angels to Pastor Pipkin and his wife and the family, the church and all the church in a whole, God. We come to you tonight for help, Lamb of God. Wow, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. We're going to read a, a, a prayer that... Solomon prayed over the house he built for God. King David couldn't, his father, because God took him. We're going to pray this prayer over your church, Pastor. And I mean it. Dexter, come up. You've got a good man's voice. And read this prayer. Everybody, it's in Second Chronicles chapter 6. And I know that this is a part God spoke to me in prayer today to read over Pastor Pimpkin, his wife, and the church. And this other part goes with it, Dexter. Second Chronicles 6, verse 12. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands. For Solomon had made a bronze platform five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high, and had set in it in the midst of the court, and he stood on it, knelt down on his knees, before all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands towards heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God in heaven or on earth like you who keep your covenant and mercy with your servants who walk before you with all their hearts. You have kept what you promised your servant David, my father. You have both spoken with your mouth and fulfilled it with your hand, as it is this day. Therefore, Lord God of Israel, now keep what you promised your servant David, my father, saying, You shall not fail to have a man sit before me on the throne of Israel. Only if your sons take heed to their way, that they walk in my law as you have walked before me. And now, O Lord God of Israel, let your word come true, which you have spoken to your servant David. But will God indeed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of the heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple which I have built Yet regard the prayer of your servant and his supplication, O Lord my God, and listen to the cry and the prayer which your servant is praying before you, that your eyes may be opened toward this temple, 
day and night toward the place where you said that you would put your name, that you may hear the prayer which your servant makes towards this place. And may you hear the supplications of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. We have to realize we need one another. You can't do it alone, brother. You cannot. You need unity. You need love. And if one of us falls, let the other pick them up. Right, guys? We have to understand that the Lord said your prayers are memorial unto him. In heaven, there's a memorial of your church's prayers. And a lot of the heartaches and sorrows you have been going through, God has given you a promise, hasn't he? Hasn't he? All of us have promises, right? We haven't received them yet. God said to us, tell my people my promises are true. Tell my people it will be work. God's going to keep his promises. Right, guys? We would like to send you a tape of this entire message. For any donation of $5 or more, we will send you a CD. For any donations of $12 or more, we will send you a DVD. Please write to us at Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047, or call 323-REJOICE. Please mention tape offer number TITW13. Three seven five. That is tape offer number T I T W one three seven five. Hi, you know the Bible says that all things are upheld by the power of this word. That means when you put the word in your heart, it will produce life and health to all your flesh. It will also produce faith so that whatever you come up against, you can overcome it. But remember, you won't have the victory you desire unless you make a decision to not allow anything to get in the way of your intimacy with Jesus, nor allow anything to distract you from your time in the word. Thank you for watching Time in the Word. If you are blessed by today's message, we'd love to hear from you. You can write us at P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047. Or call us at 323-735-6923. That's 323-REJOICE. And if you're in the Los Angeles area, visit our worship service on Saturday nights at 7.30 p.m., 1304 Cochran Avenue, corner of Cochran and Packard Street. And again, thank you for watching Time in the Word.